Hey everyone, in this series we're looking at how different PBR texture maps influence the appearance of materials and how they help us achieve realism in Blender. In this first video we'll focus on the color, roughness, metallic and height maps. Let's begin. The appearance of any material is determined by three factors. The physical properties of the material and how much it reflects versus diffuses light. How light interacts with the surface of the material and how our eyes interpret these factors. In Blender, texture maps describe the physical properties of a material and how light interacts with it. These maps are square images that wrap around your 3D models. The way these images wrap around the models is determined by UV maps, which are 2D representations of a 3D model surface. In Blender, we unwrap UVs to position texture maps accurately on the model. You can create your own materials in Blender using techniques such as procedural shading or texture painting and then generate texture maps through a process called baking. But achieving realism that accurately reflects a material's physical properties, how light interacts with its surface, and how our eyes interpret these factors can be challenging. Also, materials created in Blender might not always look the same when imported into other applications such as game engines because of variations in settings and rendering engines. Fortunately, the development of PBR provides a standardized approach to creating realistic materials. PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering. PBR focuses on accurately simulating the physical properties of materials, how light interacts with surfaces, and how these interactions are perceived by us. This ensures materials look consistent across different applications and rendering engines. Now that we understand the benefits of PBR for achieving realistic materials, let's explore the various PBR texture maps and how to use them in Blender to enhance your material workflows. The color map defines the color of a material's surface and is often referred to as diffuse or albedo map. While these terms are sometimes used interchangeably, they have distinct meanings. Diffuse maps. These represent the result of diffuse light scattering. When light hits a material, it scatters in many directions rather than reflecting directly back to the viewer, resulting in a matte or semi-matte appearance. This creates a consistent color across various lighting conditions. However, diffuse maps may include baked-in lighting information, such as shadows and highlights, which can affect the material's appearance in renders. Albedo maps. These represent the pure base color of a material without any lighting effects. They show the material's inherent color and brightness, and indicate how much light is reflected from the surface. Bright or white areas in an albedo map reflect more light, while dark areas reflect less. Since albedo maps do not contain baked-in lighting, shadows or highlights, they are particularly suitable for modern PBR workflows, where accurate representation of light interaction is crucial. When downloading textures online, you might find both diffuse and albedo maps. Both can be used depending on your needs. But do note that diffuse maps may contain baked lighting, which can limit the realism of your renders by restricting your ability to adjust shadows and highlights. In Blender, the color map is connected to the base color socket of the principal shader and uses sRGB color space to show the material's color properties. The roughness map determines how smooth or rough a surface appears. Smooth, shiny surfaces are typically flat, while rough, matte surfaces are uneven. When light hits a flat surface, such as a mirror or polished metal, it bounces back evenly, creating a shiny, reflective appearance. On the other hand, light hitting an uneven surface, like concrete or sandpaper, scatters in various directions, resulting in a matte appearance where the material's color is more visible than the environment's reflection. In a roughness map, black areas indicate a flat surface, which is smooth, while white and grey areas represent varying degrees of unevenness, which are rough. It's important to note that all real-world surfaces have some level of reflection, 
The bumpier or more uneven the surface, the more the light gets diffused, reducing the clarity of reflections. In Blender, the roughness map is connected to the roughness socket of the principal shader and uses non-color space because it represents the surface's roughness information, not its color. The metallic map in Blender indicates which parts of a material are metallic. Metals are conductive and generally have high reflectivity, differing significantly from non-conductive materials like stone, wood, and ceramics. Metals have free electrons that basically absorb and re-emit light, leading to high reflectivity. Light does not penetrate deeply into metals, but is absorbed near the surface with minimal scattering or diffusion. Therefore, metallic values should not be used for non-metallic materials, as the properties of metals don't apply to other materials. Let's take a look at how light behaves differently on metal and non-metal spheres with varying roughness settings, showing the effects on reflections and surface appearance. This sphere has a metallic setting of 1 and roughness of 0, creating a mirror-like reflection. Metals absorb and reflect light sharply, resulting in a clear, intense reflection in a metallic grey. If we turn off metallic by setting it to zero, but leave roughness at zero, the sphere will have a glossy, polished surface. Non-metals diffuse light rather than reflecting it sharply, leading to neutral, less intense highlights compared to metals. This sphere is fully metallic, with roughness set to 0.5, creating a blurry, scattered reflection. Although metals still absorb and reflect light, the rough or uneven surface causes reflections to be diffused and less clear. If we turn off the metallic, but leave the roughness at 0.5, this sphere has a matte, diffused surface. Non-metals scatter light in many directions, resulting in a soft, non-reflective look with no sharp highlights. Metals can also be rough, such as when oxidized or treated to have a matte finish, making them appear almost non-reflective. Despite these variations, the key point is that a material is either metallic or non-metallic. Therefore, the metallic map is typically either black or white, with no shades of grey. However, imperfections like dirt, dents or rust can cause metallic maps to include varying values. In Blender, the metallic map is connected to the metallic socket of the principal shader and uses non-color space because it represents the material's metalness rather than its color. A height map, also known as a displacement map, adds physical texture to a surface by simulating elevation changes. It uses grayscale values to push or pull the surface geometry White areas are pushed up, black areas are pushed down, and shades of grey represent elevations in between. Height maps add significant detail to surfaces, but can be performance intensive because the level of detail depends on the mesh's geometry. More geometry allows for finer detail but increases rendering times. To use a height map for displacement, plug the height map into the height input of a displacement node and connect this node to the displacement input of the material output node. You can adjust the strength of your displacement using the strength parameter in the displacement node. Ensure that you set the displacement method. In the latest versions of Blender, choose displacement only or displacement and bump. Before, these methods only worked in Cycles render engine, but now they are also available in Eevee. Since height maps represent elevation data rather than color, they use non-color space. You can also use a height map as a bump map by connecting it to the height input of a bump node, then plugging the bump node into the normal input of the principal shader. These maps sometimes come separately from the displacement maps and are used to display finer details. Unlike displacement maps, Bump maps do not alter the geometry, but modify the surface normals to simulate surface detail based on light interaction. 
bump maps were commonly used in games to simulate intricate details, but their grayscale nature limits them because they only store height information. These days, normal maps do a better job showing surface detail by using RGB colors to store direction, which makes lighting look more realistic. But I'll cover that in the next part, where I'll explain how normal maps work and how they add realistic surface detail in Blender. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.